with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about this Celtics matchup against the Knicks. Now, the Celtics easily won this game 132-109. to And really, this game was never close. I mean, literally at the first quarter, the Boston Celtics scored 43 points compared to the Knicks' 24 points. And after that first quarter, that was when I turned off the game. <laughs> I, I can't even lie to you because... Once the Celtics hold such a dominant lead like that, there was no way that the Knicks were going to be able to come back. Like, there was just no way. Now, Jason Tatum ended this game with an incredible MVP-like performance. 37 points, 10 assists, 4 rebounds. Um, this, is a, this is an insult to Steve Kerr. Like, this is what... You, you wanted me to play zero minutes in the Olympics? You wanted me to play zero minutes in the Olympics? That was... Um, that was exactly what Jason Tatum was saying in this game, I have no doubt. Jalen Brown also played incredibly solid, 23 points, 7 rebounds. Derek White ended with 24 points, 4 assists, along with 3 rebounds. And Drew Holiday ended with 18 points. This team played phenomenally. They almost were able to tie the record in, um, or break the record in most 3-pointers made in a game with 30, but then they ended up missing like 10 straight in the fourth quarter. Regardless, the team shot 29 for 61 from three. And when a team is shooting that incredibly well from three, it's almost impossible to win. And I mean, 29 three-pointers, that is an, an incredible amount of three-pointers and almost a record-breaking amount of three-pointers that they ended up taking. I mean, they also, in the total of the game, they took 61 three-pointers. They are a heavy three-point shooting team, over 30%. Um, actually, no, I'm just gonna, let me do some quick math here, just trying to get, so roughly two-thirds of their shots were three-pointers, and of the three-pointers that they took, they ended up making 29 of them, which is, hold on, 29, that's like around 47% from the three-point line. And they ended up shooting 50% from the field. Like, when a team is shooting that well, taking that many threes, it's like, you're not going to win. It's impossible to win unless you match that three-point percentage somehow. And, of course, the Knicks, not um, being the Knicks, they were unable to do that. So, in this game, I mean, the key to, really, I, I knew I, I know I picked the Knicks to um, possibly upset the, um, the Boston Celtics, but... Not only was I blatantly wrong, I was also rather arrogant for that take. I should have, I definitely should have known better. Because looking back at it, like, this is a team, the Knicks, who essentially made a last second move to acquire a new player and completely change the roster with Carl Anthony Towns. In the first game, going up against a team that won the championship and a team that has already played with each other, winning the championship hasn't changed. Um, for the most part in the in the off season, it was rather arrogant for me to pick um, the Knicks as opposed to the Celtics because the Knicks they still have to find their identity with Carl Anthony Towns. Meanwhile, the Boston Celtics have already established their identity and already know how to do this, how to do that, how to run their systems. Acquiring new players, which the Knicks ended up doing in the off season, like Miles Bridges and recently Carl Anthony Towns. It's not, not Miles Bridges, Mikal Bridges, excuse me. There's two M Bridges on, in the NBA, I apologize. But acquiring Mikal and acquiring Cat is definitely going to sort of affect your team at the start of the season because you're still trying to figure things out, especially with Mikal. Mikal in this game, he did not, I don't think he made a single shot in the first half, which was really poor shooting. However, he ended the game going 7 for 13 from the field, which isn't really that bad, um, ending with 16 points. But once the Celtics went and got that huge lead, the rest of the game was just garbage time for the Knicks. And you're not going to beat the Celtics when they have a huge lead like that. Like, this, this shooting from Bridges should have been happening throughout the, through the first quarter and continuing on in this game. If it wasn't, how should I say this? If it wasn't because of his shooting, I think the Knicks would have made this game a little bit more competitive but again, like the Celtics, they just were not missing from three. They were absolutely, they were locked in on this. And I'm, I'm a little bit afraid now because they do have a very solid chance of repeating. And I didn't think of this sooner, but Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, 
they probably had the worst off season um for championships like in for champions like usually whenever a team wins the championship it's players they get all of this praise they get all of this um recognition for actually um winning the championship but the Celtics not so much everybody was clowning the Celtics most of the time especially throughout the off season i mean Jalen Brown was getting clowned because he wasn't getting he did not get picked for the Olympics. Jason Tatum was getting clowned because he wasn't playing in the Olympics for um a lot of the times. And all of this it it's just fuel to the fire just to encourage the Celtics to repeat and do it again. So, congratulations fans. You guys just gave these um players another reason as to why they should repeat and go back to back. And if they win the championship in the end, it'll be on you. It'll be on the, all of those people that were just making fun of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown for not playing in in this in the Olympics and all of the backlash that they got in the off season. Because while I absolutely despise the Celtics and despise that organization with my heart, I fully gave them the respect that they needed for winning the championship. It didn't matter that I didn't like them. It didn't matter that I didn't want them to win the championship. They earned that respect by getting over the hump and being able to do what everyone thought they were unable to do in previous years. And that demands respect. But obviously, the um, there are a lot of fanatics out there that would completely disagree with that take. And to that, I say, congratulations, you just gave them another reason to try and repeat. Now, whether or not you think they're going to repeat is a whole different story, but everyone else seems to think they're going to repeat based off of just how dominant this roster is and how um and how incredible the starting lineup actually is for this team. Now, for the Knicks, Jalen Brunson, he had a rather quiet 22-point game. He went 9 for 14. Um McBride actually played really well in this game. 22 points, 8 for 10. Bridges as I mentioned before, 7 for 13, 16 points. Carl Anthony Towns went 5 for 9 with 12 points, 1 of 2 from 3. And Josh Hart went 4 for 6 with 12 points. Now, it's not like these guys really played bad, but it's just like that first quarter really, really killed them. And it, it was really just the Celtics making way more shots. Like, it, it, it was in staggering the amount of three-pointers they were able to make. And maybe this is a sign that the Knicks need to start taking a couple more three-pointers. Maybe this is a sign that some of these players have to start scoring a little bit more because I'm I'm actually kind of surprised that Jalen Brunson didn't take the liberty of taking more shots than he did. But that's besides the point. Obviously, this is a whole new team. They're still trying to find their identity. So I wouldn't really say this loss really cripples them because, again, still got to find their identity. But this is a pretty solid start if you're a Boston fan. Makes total sense. I was incredibly naive at picking the um, the Knicks. I don't know why I didn't pick the Celtics to win this game. But um, I guess, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, And really just um, OG Ananobi, he played 34 minutes, but he only recorded four points. And on top of that, he was not the X factor in stopping Jason Tatum in this game. I mean, he had a true shooting of 91%. And 14 for 18 from the field, 8 for 11 from 3. That is just incredible shooting from Jason Tatum. Not to mention Derek White, who ended up, who ended up going 6 for 10 from 3 and 8 for 13 from the field. Like, just, just a dominant game all around from the starters and the Boston Celtics. So, that's all that I really have to say about this game. And um, I'm very excited that the NBA season is starting now. It's great. I actually have things to look forward to. It's amazing. And especially the, um, especially the Lakers game, because I am so, I am so looking forward for this, um, uh, for the Lakers and their season under J.J. Redick. But I'm very, I'm very excited for the games that are going down today as well. So that's all that I really have on the second segment. So now I'm going to go ahead and go into the third segment where I talk about Joel Embiid and him being out on opening night for um, actually tonight's game between the Bucks and the 76ers. So I'm going to talk about that right after this short break. Be sure to stay tuned.
Looking for your daily fix of sports talk without having to pay for it? GSMC Sports Network is available on YouTube. Just search GSMC Sports Network. Get your fix of daily sports talk shows on YouTube absolutely free. NFL, college football, NBA, MLB, MMA, UFC, fantasy football, and so much more. GSMC Sports Network has shows running all day long with new sports shows starting every two hours. Just like on your favorite cable sports channel, except GSMC Sports Network is absolutely free. Just search GSMC Sports Network on YouTube to catch one of your new favorite shows, like the GSMC College Football Podcast, Chip Shot Football Podcast, Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast, GSMC Basketball Podcast, and so many more. Check it out for yourself. GSMC Sports Network, now available on YouTube absolutely free. Search GSMC Sports Network on YouTube right now.